Hello, everyone. In this second lecture on of the course data communication, we are going to discuss our networks. And the following are the learning objectives for this class. So we will define what is network. We will also discuss on the network criteria and the attributes of the networks, where we are going to talk about connections and the topology. Right. So let us start with the definition of network. So what is a network? A network is the interconnection of is the interconnection of interconnection of a set of devices capable of capable of communication. Okay, so a network is a is the interconnection of set of devices capable of communication. Now, what are these set of devices? So here, we need to observe that there is set of devices and they are interconnected and they are capable of communication. Okay. So this is called as network. Now, what does it mean? It means if I represent these devices as a circle, Okay, so I'll represent it for illustration purpose. I'll represent them as a circle. So we have set of devices, right? And they are interconnected. So we are going to connect them. Right? So this is a network. Now, another point that we have to observe that what do you mean by these devices, right? What are these devices? Okay, that are interconnected. So they are, it can be like a, a computer. So it can be like some workstation, right? Or a hub. It is also called a switch, right? Some security system, right, etc. Right? So we are connecting, <coughs> we are making an interconnection of these set of devices. Okay, so we are interconnecting them and these devices, uh, they can be like a workstation, a hub or a security system. Now, when I'm talking about the interconnection of devices, right? So they should meet some criteria, right? So when we, when we are connecting these, uh, there should be some criteria that need to be met. Okay, so let's see what are those criteria. So some criteria need to be met. For what, what, what it is means, you see, when we are connecting these devices, how efficient is this connection? Right? So we need to measure. So one criteria is performance. Right? Okay, so what is this performance? 
So performance, I mean, we can measure what is the transit time. This is one of the performance measurement we can use, transmit time. The time that it takes for a node to send some data to the another node in the network that we have interconnected. We can have a response time, right? Response time. So this we can use it as one measurement technique. We can use throughput. Throughput, that is number of bits that the system is outputting when uh, we are giving some input, so output by input. So how much is the throughput of the system? We can take the delay as another performance, right? So we have uh, the delay in the transmission of the uh, data. So the performance measurement, the, the performance of the network is one of the criteria. So we can also see the reliability of the connections. Reliability. It means how you know how it can handle the failure of the net link, right? So if if we assume that in this network a link is broken or uh, something has happened, this communication is lost. So how it is reliable to this failure? Okay, so that we can also call it robustness, right? So robustness. Hmm. They are talking about the failure. So failure of is what we are uh, so we are trying to measure here. So reliable. The another uh, criteria when we correct the system is security. Right? How secured is is this network? I mean, the data how it is how much it is secured the, the way we are transmitting. Right, so these are the, uh, what you can say, uh, the criteria that any network need to meet. So what we, what we can summarize here is a network is an interconnection of the set of devices, uh, like uh, the workstations, hub, switch, security systems, etc. And they are having the capability to communicate and when we, when we make this interconnection, we also need to uh, take care of this net. Uh, I mean, we need to measure the uh, the design of this network. So, for using the three criteria, that is performance, reliability, and security. <clears throat> so, let us see some of its attributes. Here, we are referring to Two things. One is the types of connection. The attributes here we are referring to the physical connections, the type of connection. And when we are connecting them, when we are interconnecting the devices, we will, it will result into something called as topology. So, what are the different topologies that are possible? Fine. So let's take it, start with types of connection. So types of connection is, it refers to two, it refers to two types. One is point to point connection. Point to point connection. It means one, there are two devices, which are connected. So this becomes a point to point connection. Right? So there is another connection which is called multi point connection. Multi point connection. Now, in this case, there are now multiple devices. And these devices are connected 
I mean, one device is connected to multiple devices, right? So this connection, the first, this is, which is called point to point connection. And we have this kind of connection, which is uh, a multi-point connection. So what we have to observe is, see these two devices are connected through some transmission medium. Let's call this as V, right? During the, uh, in this kind of connection, that is in the point to point, I'm discussing about the point to point communication. The resources, that is the, uh, the link is dedicated for use between these two devices. So it means the bandwidth and everything, uh, the, uh, the bandwidth of this link is, uh, you know, is dedicated to these devices. But whereas in this case, this link is shared. Okay, so the link will be shared between these devices. Now this link sh sharing can happen in two cases. Either I can do it on the temporal way. The sharing can be temporal. That is uh, time slots will be allotted or it can be a spatial, right? So in the temporal, I'm allotting a time slot. In a given time slot, uh, the users will share the information or it can also be a spatial. I mean, I'm going to give the frequency band in a specific dedicated band and uh, during uh, and that whole dedicated, I mean, that, that band of the range of frequencies, they are going to uh, sh share the information, right? So this is uh, also they called as capacity sharing. So in our further syllabus, I mean, uh, uh, after uh, second or third module, we will we are going to also discuss about how these what are the methods uh, that are used to share this chat. Fine. <clears throat> now the other attribute of the network is types of topology, right? So there are four types of topology that we will discuss. It's called as mesh topology. This is the first one. The second is star topology. Third is bus topology and fourth is ring topology, right? And what is that we are going to discuss? We will see the structure of it. I mean, uh, how they are, what do you mean by a mesh? How the devices are connected? So we are going to understand in terms of Okay, so we are going to understand Okay, so we are going to understand in terms of structure Right The connections and the link requirement. So, I mean number of connections okay, Let's Let's write it. Number of ports and links required in each of these topologies. We will see the reliability of this. Okay, so let us in terms of these uh, three points, we are going to put our discussion. So let's first start with the mesh topology and see how this topology will look. Fine, 
in mesh topology, let us assume that we have some n number of dimensions. Right, so here I'm taking five devices. Fine, in mesh topology, all devices are connected. So one that device one is connected to all the remaining other four devices. Right, similarly two is connected to all the remaining other devices. Similarly, three and similarly four. So this sort of structure is called as mesh topology. So in mesh topology, if I take n number of nodes, so we have n number of nodes, right? So here in this example, my n is 5, right? So the example, in the example, we have n has 5. And each node requires four ports. See, we have four here for this link and for this link and for this link. Fine. So we need n minus one nodes, right? That is four. So if for our example, we need four nodes. So if there are n nodes, there are n minus number, n minus one number of nodes. And in the previous class, we discussed about the uh, flow of the data, correct? And if I assume the duplex mode, that link is been shared to both transmit and receive, then the total number of links we need is so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, right? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Right? So how many we have? We have, think about how many mistake. 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we have Ten number of nodes, right? So we'll be having n n into n minus one number of links, right? <clears throat> so we have five into four. So we are using duplex. So I can call it as n into n minus one by two. So this is two which is 10 links, correct? So number of ports, if I'm having n number of nodes, number of ports required is n minus one, and number of links that are required, so we counted here and also we can establish that expression, that is n into n minus one by two number of links. Now we have understood the structure, and the, <clears throat> uh, the kind of network we have to see, and also looked at number of ports and links. So let us see the reliability of this, I mean the robustness to the failure. Okay, so let's see how robust it is. Fine, so for this case, let us assume that a link is broken between the node 2 and 3. So this link is, is disconnected or it has failed. Okay. Then whether the communication is possible in the network between 2 to 3? Yes. The 2 now is connected to 3 
via phi. So it, it can be connected through via phi or uh, some other device. Here, just for illustration, I took that it can be connected through phi. So it can also connect to one or four for any from any other device. So what we can observe is this is robust. The mesh topology is robust to network failures. Is robust to network failures. So if I'm interconnecting the devices in a mesh topology, and if any one of the link fails, then also the network will be uh, will be running. <clears throat> so what is the other uh, advantage we are getting? See, what about the fault identification? Right. So this is it easy to identify the fault? Yes, this is very easy. We can just uh, see that uh, uh, which device is not getting connected. And uh, uh, we can easily identify uh, the fault in the network. So that is another advantage we are going to get. Right? So now let's take the second kind of topology, which is called bus topology. Oh, sorry, we will take star topology first. Star topology. Right? So let's see, what do you mean by the star topology? In star topology, we use a special kind of device. Right? So we use a special kind of device called as hub. And now we have nodes. And all these nodes are connected through this hub. So if I'm using n number of nodes, so in this case, I'm using three nodes, right? So if I'm using n number of nodes, right? Then the hub, so we have an another device, not just only a host, which is having a capacity of having multiple ports. So that's what we have to observe in the mesh topology. Each host need to have n minus one number of ports. So it means if the hardware, the, the computer becomes uh, very complex there with in terms of communication uh, capacities. Here, the host will be having one port, whereas hub will having n number of hosts or n plus one number of host uh, ports. So we need more number of ports. So it might be n plus one, or at least we need n, right? N number of ports must be there. This plus one, you know, that is used when I'm having a fourth device, which is again a hub. Okay, so if I take this, then we need n plus one. So only hubs if there are there. Okay, so or we can just take that as n number of. So we need n number of ports. So let's not make things complex here. So you will have that a hub we need is n ports. Fine. And whereas the host need with one port. And the number of links that we need is number of links, the number of connections that we require. In this case, we need only three, right? So there is a number of links. Okay, so in star topology, it's not like one host is uh, it's been there either. We are using a special device here, which is called as a hub. Now, what is the robustness? how it handles the failure. So let's see how it handles the failure. So if I'm observing a failure in the link one, 
left. Let's call this as link one. Okay, I'm naming this it as link one. Okay, and this link one is, is failing. So then what will happen? So when this link fails, when the link fails, then there is only, so failure, so in where we are seeing that failure, so link one is failed. So we are taking an example, link one is failed. Then, then what happens is, we can observe that the connection, the host one is the only device that is disconnected, is disconnected, right? Rest network is still functioning. Rest network is still working, correct? And again, you can also easily identify the uh, failure of this network. Okay, the failure, uh, the which link has been failed. Identification is also easy in this case. But the host is completely, the host one is completely disconnected from the network. So that's what uh, is going to happen with the start of the G. The one host will not be there in the network. So this kind of start of the G we see very common in our laboratories. Right in our lab, if you go and visit your lab, so in, at some corner we will be having a, a rectangular size of box, something like this, and there will be uh, the ports that are there and uh, for which a cable is connected, wire is connected to the desktop machines. Right? So there are some desktop machines. Uh, to this, uh, we are going to connect, right? It's very common in, uh, in our laboratories <clears throat> and in most of the places also. So the third kind of topology that we are going to discuss is bus topology. So in the bus topology, We have a, a cable, let me take this to dry it cleanly. So let's see that how this bus topology look like. So we have a, a cable that is terminated. Okay, so these are called as cable these are called as this is called as cable end so they are going to the terminated property, right? So we are having this one bus, a very uh, high bandwidth link. So this is also called as backbone, right? And to this backbone, we are connecting the hosts through a special devices called as taps, right? So this topology was actually proposed by VM. So we have host one and host two. So these are our host, right? So to this backbone, to this, to this, uh, cable, these hosts are connected. So this kind of topology is called as bus topology, right? So what we can see here, 
the number of ports that are required at the host. So here, I need at the host. So I'm talking about at the host, we require one port. Right? So we don't have like hub, like uh, in star topology, we have a hub. We don't use any such kind of central device here. And uh, we even don't have a, a host that required many number of ports. So we have only one port at the host. And there are some special uh, connecting devices, which are called as a taps. And the number of links required is, so number of links that are there is n plus one, right? So we have link one, link two. So we have link one, link two, and there is one more link, big link. There's a back one, which are three links. So it means that we have only n plus one links. Now, what is the failure in this case? This is the robustness of this network. So we observe two cases. So if this link one breaks, right? So I'll take an example that link one is failed. Is failed. Then only host one is disconnected, right? So we are not able to make any sort of communication to the host one or host one is now not able to communicate with other hosts in the net. The second observation what we can see, if the backbone fails, so this is the first, the second case that we have to see, fail, failure of backbone, failure of backbone. Now, what happened with this? The complete network, complete network fails. So no host are able to make any sort of communication. So the network will fail. This is collapse in the network. But the advantage we see here is the hardware kind of requirement, the host, the links, is pretty much less when you compare it to the star topology, and it is very less when you compare it with the, it with the uh, mesh topology. The only the drawback will be it's about robustness. And uh, we, you can see this kind of uh, topology in your campuses, where uh, in your college, please look at this, uh, take this as an exercise. Locate the backbone in your campus, that is where uh, the cables are laid and the lands are connected. Okay, so just try to identify, talk to your network admin and get a survey on that, you know, whether you are using a mesh topology. So in, gen in, in uh, general, we don't uh, go with mesh topology in the campus. We don't see much there. But star topology, bus topology, and uh, rarely we also see this ring topology. So let's now talk about this ring topology. So in ring topology, again, we have a backbone. Now this is connected as a ring. Right, so it is closed, and there are again the taps. And the hosts are connected to this taps. So we have host one is connected to this, we have host two connected to the network through this and Host three connected to the network through these taps. Now, can you identify the difference between this ring topology and the one here, which is the bus topology? Right? So, can you identify? 
right? So if I look at the hardware, so if I look at the hardware, right? let's first start the host, right? The host we need uh, with only one port, a number of links we required is, so in this case, I'm having four and plus one. So obviously it is n plus one, right? So if we're having n number of nodes, so number of nodes, number of nodes we are having is one, uh, n number of nodes, and each host require only one port. Uh, here, one port is there. And we see that there are three links. So we have link one, this is link two, I'll call this as L2, and we have this link three, correct? And there is one more link, which is link four. Now, what is the difference you observe? We don't have the third kind of specialized device. So here, what devices we see? The devices we see is host. So this is my, right? So this is the device one, correct? So this is device one. There is a second device two. It's not a very communicating device. It's just like some connection device. Let's not, some component and function. So there is a device, right? So one more device called cable. We only see two here. There's a host and there is a tap. So we don't require, what we don't need is, there is no existence of cable end. So that is the, Major, I mean, the advantage that we see in terms of hardware, right? So, but what about the failure of the network? So, what about the failure of the network? The robustness. So, again, we see two cases. The link breaks. Okay, so link broken, link fail. Breaks. Then, Host one is disconnected. Correct. Now the other observation, if the link fails, I mean if the backbone fails. Okay, if the backbone, backbone breaks, then network, the whole network is faint. So there is no more communication between the hosts. So we have, we can observe these two. So what is that advantage again when you compare it with the other three topologies? There is a the cost of this network because we are not having much of the devices. There is no host. Uh, host does not require more number of ports. Uh, it even does not require a cable end. So it, it is going to be very much uh, lower cost when we compare. But the robustness of this network is, is very crucial, right? Okay, so what we have learned uh, in this today's class. So let's see what are our outcomes, right? So we have defined what is network. Correct. So we have defined what is network. And since it talks about interconnection and the devices which are capable of communicating, so there might be a number of devices. So we have listed the criteria. So what some criteria that need to be met. Okay, listed criteria to be met. So you should be able to talk about what are the criteria of the network. Of course, uh, we didn't uh, go with a detailed discussion on uh, the performance metrics, but we listed and we should be able to recite uh, the criteria. Okay, so we should be able to recall them later when required. Then the we also uh, listed and we discussed, right? So we discussed, we should be able to 
discuss the topology types. Topology. Okay. Topology and compare them. And compare them. Right. So these were the outcomes of this today discussion. Fine. So that's uh, the end of this video lecture. In the next lecture, we will continue with uh, the network types. Uh, so we are going to discuss on what, what is the difference between a LAN and LAN. And uh, since in a, in a LAN, since we use switch, uh, we will also introduce to the kind of switching possibilities that is circuit and network switching. Okay. So that's the end of this class. We'll see you in the next class. Thank you.